Good evening, lovely listeners, and welcome back to Raven Reads. I am Raven, and this is the 12th installment of Night Marathon. In this particular video, we will be taking a trip to Canada. It turns out that Canada has some pretty crazy lore and a lot of really cool stories. As I was searching for stories for this video, I also came across a lot of urban legends and really cool haunted history that I will have to make videos on in the future. I'm sure you guys will love these stories, at least I hope you do, and I hope you've been enjoying Night Marathon so far. As always, links to everything you might need will be down in the video description. Be sure to like this video if you do, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you don't miss a single video of Night Marathon. Without further ado, you know what time it is. Grab your gear, get a beverage of choice, get comfortable, and get ready to take another journey into the night. I recently moved from North Carolina to Vancouver Island, BC, Canada for work. It's truly beautiful here, and the lush, green, mossy forests of the Pacific Northwest are definitely something else. You have trails, woods, and parks everywhere here, so it's no surprise that there was a huge old-growth tree area two minutes away from my house. After a couple of weeks of settling in, it became a routine to walk my dog in these woods daily. I mean, at least until two days ago. I went for a walk with my dog fairly early in the morning, right after the sun rose. It was a typical walk for me, until my dog, who always loves to walk these woods, wouldn't move. It just stood still and barked toward a tree. As much as I tried to get him to move, he's a big dog and it's hard to control him when he doesn't obey. At first I thought it must have been a squirrel, or a bird, but then I hear laughing coming from that direction. As far as I could see, there were no other humans nearby, but then I see it. A little human-looking being quickly sprints through some ferns, no taller than 10 to 12 inches, seems pale green, a sort of moldish color. As far as I'm aware, it had some hairs, and it ran very fast. I didn't manage to get a photo of it or observe many details, as my dog's loud barking got distracting. After this, I didn't stay to investigate and quickly walked back home, and luckily, my dog followed along. I no longer feel safe in those woods, and if anybody knows what that could have been, help is very much appreciated. I know what I saw. I assume that I'm going to be called delusional, and I guess I would most likely say the same if someone told me this story. But everything that I said is exactly what I saw. I live on the west coast of British Columbia in Canada, about midway up the coast. I was driving my girlfriend back to her granddad's house, two towns over from mine. It's about a two and a half hour drive on the highways. I had driven her home and spent the day visiting her family. The town she is from is right on the coast. It's a port city. Not super important, but the point is that I spent the day there and was now getting ready to drive back home. About 25 to 30 minutes into the drive, I'm on the highway that runs parallel to the mouth of the river on one side, and the CN tracks on the other. So it goes rail on my left, the road I'm on, and then sort of a mini channel where the river ends. I'm driving and it's getting dark, but I'm not tired or drowsy at all. There's a few rest stops along the road on my right, on the river bank. I had to pee, so I started slowing down at the first one, and that's when some thing scurries across the road. And that's almost all that happened. 
It was four-legged, at least from what I saw, and it was the blackest of black, like unnaturally dark. No texture or anything to it. It almost looked like a void of light or color in the shape of this thing. It ran out of the bush, over the rails, and I was going slow enough that the wind and highway noise was gone, and I heard it. It sounded like metal tapping as it ran over the ballast and the rail. And then there was the sound like if you took a rod of rebar or something and stabbed it into the ground, then metal again as it ran right in front of me across the road. Its body was shaped like how some people describe a UFO, almost flat and disc-like, like an oval stretched out with the legs protruding from the front and the back. It had no features. No eyes, no face, no mouth, nothing that I could see. It ran across the road, limbs outstretched as it ran, and then it ran into the rest area and over the bank and I'm guessing into the river. This thing was huge. I'm talking like the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. Very big and very fast. I've tried searching this online, but I haven't had any luck. If anyone can help me figure out what I saw, please let me know. When I was a kid, years ago, we heard stories of a little ghost boy that haunted my grandparents' place. Stories of how they would hear my cousin's toys moving around at night, or find his tricycle not where it was left. My uncle was renovating the basement one day by himself, and was going back to the house with some lumber. He looked up at the house, and the little boy was looking at him through the window. One day, when I was about 11 or 12, it would be my turn. I was in the kitchen eating a sandwich and drinking a pop, and my little cousin was about 6 to 7. He was drawing on a piece of paper on the floor. His back was to the basement stairs, and he was crouched over his drawing. I was watching him and, all of a sudden, a little boy of about four years old comes tiptoeing up the stairs. He stood behind my cousin and was leaning over him, watching him draw. When he was doing this, he had his hands behind his back, leaning. Then he turned and looked at me, smiled, and ran down the hallway. When he got to the bathroom, he disappeared. I remembered that he was bow-legged and pigeon-toed by the way his feet swept back when he ran. Also, he wore tight blue jeans that went above his ankles, navy blue socks, and a striped tight t-shirt. I am a Native American from Alberta, Canada, and this little boy was Caucasian. We heard stories about an old man and a little boy that were buried in the unmarked graves nearby. The land before we lived there was used to travel to a trading post that used to be near us. I bet it was him. Poor little guy. He used to be just a baby before he passed. My grandparents were eventually tired of the stories and they prayed over the home, and we've never seen him again. When I was 16 years old, I bought a one-way plane ticket to Edmonton, Alberta. My first real girlfriend had broken my heart and I needed to get away. School ended and I got on that plane. I ended up traveling and working all over northern Alberta, making forays into the Northwest Territory and northern British Columbia. I was living in a tent in high-level Alberta and working at Swanson's, a local lumber mill on the dry chain pole. This involved grading lumber and stacking it as it came out from the sawmill. Mostly 2x material, spruce used in framing applications and things like that. I lived pretty simply and cooked over a fire. Wood was not an issue. For a refrigerator, I just dug down in the cold earth about three feet and made a lid with plywood and kept all of my perishables in there. It worked great. I worked with a lot of indigenous people. My foreman was a native, as were most of my co-workers. I grew fond of most of them. They would stop by my camp and check in on me from time to time, even the foreman who took me to a real bar for the very first time. This campsite had a hand-pumped well, 
where I would get my daily water from. It was maybe a hundred yards away from my tent, with a clear and worn path to follow. One morning in late July, I woke up, shook myself out of my sleeping bag, opened the tent door, and grabbed my water jug. I was far enough north that the night was short. I could read a book at 11 p.m. and not need any extra light other than what the sun provided. I proceeded up the path, and about halfway to the pump, I almost tripped over a guy who was laying on the ground. He was dressed in what I assumed to be traditional native garb, and had a fire going, right up against a tree, to reflect the heat back onto him. I said, oh, I'm sorry, almost didn't see you there. He looked at me and all he said was, white man use propane? I was a bit thrown off, but I pointed to his fire and said, kind of chuckling, no, no, I use wood for fires, just like you. He didn't say anything, but gave me the biggest smile and nodded. I went on my way, got my water, and started heading back. I got to the spot where I had seen the old man, but he was gone. The fire was gone too. I thought, well that's weird, and I went back to make sure that I wasn't missing him somehow. I knew I was right though. I felt the tree, and it wasn't even warm. I kicked some needles around, but there was absolutely no sign of a fire ever being there. No sign of a body laying down. Nothing. It was like he never existed. Like the fire never existed. The funny thing was, though, I wasn't really scared or freaked out, as he had seemed so benign. Like he was on my side. It's really hard to describe. So, this happened 15 years ago to my brother and I, and I still can't come up with a satisfactory logical answer to explain our experience. For detail, this happened in Ontario, Canada, and we were 8 and 5. I was 8 and he was 5. It's a suburban area built around a medium-sized forest, and our house backs into the woods, we were driving home with our mom, and we were arguing, so she told us to get out and work it out before we came home. She dropped us off in front of the woods at the playground. There's a connected public path leading back up through the woods to our street, it's about a five minute walk, and a small hill between the playground and the main road. We were not pleased that we got in trouble, so we made up quickly and started playing on the slide in the swings. My brother was up on the slide platform, and I was over on the swings when he called down to me. Who are those guys? I looked over and I saw two men dressed in black suits, white shirts, and black sunglasses coming over the top of the hill toward us. They were walking briskly and purposefully, right in our direction. They had brown hair, not close cropped but short and had fairly pale skin. It was beyond bizarre, and they scared me right away. I told my brother to come down the slide so we could go home. They had already unnerved him enough that he actually listened to me. We started down the path home, and when I looked over my shoulder, they were still coming toward us, walking quickly. That was horrifying, so I started to walk even faster too holding my brother's hand and pulling him along. Maybe 30 seconds later, I looked behind me again, and they had started to run toward us. They weren't sprinting, more of a jog, but they were bigger, so they were gaining on us fast. That pushed us over the edge into complete terror. I screamed at my brother to run home as fast as he could. I knew that he was a faster runner than me and I thought that he would be able to tell our parents if I ended up being kidnapped. I have honestly never run faster in my life, and we didn't look behind us again until we made it to our house. Our parents were still unloading the groceries and were surprised when we ran up out of breath and on the verge of tears. They figured that we had gotten spooked on our own. After all, some guys in suits chasing us was a pretty weird story. The men never said a word, it was like a wall of silence had accompanied them. 
Neither of us have ever experienced anything like that again. And it wasn't until last year, when I watched a BuzzFeed Unsolved episode about Men in Black encounters, that I realized that was what we'd seen. Has anyone else had an encounter? Or does anyone have any theories about who those men could have been, if you don't believe in the Men in Black? I'm a 28-year-old male who lives in British Columbia, Canada. This experience had happened when I was about nine years old. During the time, we used to live by a heritage site which was called the Pillith House. You can Google it if you want some more background. My family and pretty much the entire neighborhood used to refer to this house as the Creepy Doll House every time we drove by or spoke of it. This experience had happened on a windy, somewhat rainy fall day. I was sick that day, so my mom made me stay home and I didn't have to show up to school. At the time, it was only my mom and I at home. I had two older sisters that were in high school and my dad was at work. My mom used to sew clothes for a living and worked from home a couple of days during the week. Right outside the rear sliding door that exits to the backyard, we built a small shed, like a room area, where my mom could sew and store her sewing machine and supplies. She would be in there a couple of hours a day and would check up on me when it was time for lunch and things like that. On this particular day, it was a normal sick day for me, just like every other sick day. I woke up, had some cereal, and turned on the TV to watch some Barney while my mom was in the backyard sewing her clothes. The couch that I was on was facing the TV, so my head was turned to the left. In front of me was a black glass fireplace with a reflection where my two feet were facing. We also had a hallway that would lead up to the bedrooms where my head was pointing at. As I was watching Barney, I remember this pretty vividly, I noticed a dark figure with its knees bent, hunched over and swaying side to side with its arms bent out on the reflection of my fireplace. This figure continued its dancing for a couple of seconds until I turned around to look down the hallway and nothing was there. It was almost as if it was mimicking what Barney was doing on TV. I wasn't frightened because I thought it could have just been one of my siblings home for lunch or just screwing with me. I called out to my siblings by name, but nobody answered. I even ran down the hallway and checked out all the rooms, but again nobody was there. I ran out to get my mom and told her what happened, so we both came inside to look around but the house was empty. But here's the strangest part. As we were coming out of the hallway, the front door slammed open, so I had to go downstairs and close and lock it. It was windy that day, but the door should have been locked. We didn't really think much of it and just sort of brushed it off. Fast forward more than 10 years later. By this time, we had already moved out my sister had come to visit me and my parents and we were talking over lunch. My sister had recently learned that her friend's dad works for the government and was assigned to take care of and maintain the Pillith House. She only brought this up because, again, the Pillith House used to be right beside us. This would require him to stay a night so he could wake up and do yard work. Apparently, he has had some frequent experiences in that house such as random footsteps, knocking, but mostly someone jumping on his bed while he was trying to sleep. He was never bothered by it because it was so frequent it just seemed normal. He mentioned that there was the spirit of a little boy and a man in that house. As she was telling us this, I immediately connected the dots. I'm pretty sure I met the little boy, and I'm pretty sure he just wanted to play. I have a ghost in my life and I have named him Toby, the name from the Paranormal Activity franchise. 
it's to make light of a creepy situation. Oddly enough, I would say that 98% of my encounters with my ghost, I was never alone. There was usually another person with me when he would make an appearance. This all started with a single photo that I took. I should give more context. So before I moved out for school, I lived on an acreage with my dad and brother, and this area has small abandoned buildings everywhere that can be easily explored. So between the ages of 17 and 18, I had some friends over, two guys and three girls including myself, and we would go exploring and get our spook on. We had some scary moments, but I am also chalking it up to overactive imaginations and purposefully scaring each other. This time was no different than the others, we thought. We went to this little church near my dad's house and we did some exploring. We managed our way in and looked around. The girls and I spooked ourselves and hightailed it back to the truck, and the guys were laughing at us. I decided to take a picture of them. I was periodically taking photos throughout the night. The next day we all woke up and I was looking through my photos and noticed that I had captured something else in one particular photo. It really creeped me out, but it eventually was just forgotten. Not long after I started having nightmares and these nightmares are recurring and can last anywhere between one night to a whole year. I am 24 years old now, and I still get them. Initially, I didn't put two and two together, until a friend of mine noticed my ghost and nightmares started happening at the same time. My nightmares are also important to my spooky happenings, or at least I feel like they are. Now for the meat of the story. A few months after graduating high school, I moved eight hours away from home with my best friend and then boyfriend for college. At the time, I have been getting this particular nightmare of a horse being dismembered alive and I was stuck in place and couldn't do anything to help. It was disrupting my sleep and I would say that I was having this nightmare anywhere between one to three times a week for a year. A year and a half later, after moving to this new city, things happened and my best friend and I were looking for somewhere else to live. We'd asked a friend that we'd become very close with to move in with us. We found a little three-bedroom townhouse on the west side of the city. We also had the best friend's brother and my cousin staying in the basement temporarily. It was a cramped house, but we made it work. The townhouse is when Toby made his first appearance. The layout of this place was simple. You walk in, there are stairs going up to your right, and straight ahead, you can see the kitchen and living room. They were separated by a wall. I believe this was a Friday or a Saturday night in the winter time in Canada, because I remember fondly that I was home alone and the others were out being busy. I was in the living room studying with no TV on, and I heard this very distinct man sneeze come from the kitchen. I just froze because it was so unexpected and so close. I remember going through the entire house to see if I was truly alone. Once I realized that I was indeed by myself, I called my best friend and told her to come home because I was scared. They ended up laughing at me because they just assumed that I had an active imagination, but oh boy, were they going to find out that they were wrong. Around this time, I was nightmare free for maybe a few months, and after Toby's first appearance, they started up again, but it was a different one. I had a recurring dream of me watching this man being eaten alive by a bear, and again I was frozen in place and I couldn't help. So a month or so after the sneeze, my friend and roommate and I were watching TV. We were the only ones home at the time, and our stairway had photos and paintings and frames. Every single one of them came crashing down at the same time. The stairway has no windows in it, and it was cold outside, so no wind could have knocked them down. We went to investigate and every single one of them was on the ground. 
We were pretty scared at that point, but we hung them back up. Over a period of time, we would learn that we couldn't keep anything on the walls. After some time, we had to move out due to the landlord selling the place, and we moved to this condo. It was a beautiful place. I started getting more and worse nightmares, and they were alternating between four dreams. Two events happened in this condo, and I also forgot to mention that I had two cats this entire time. They began to interact with Toby in this place. For the first occurrence, all of us were sitting on the couch in the living room, and the couch is parallel with the stairs going up. It was nighttime, and both cats got fuzzy-tailed and stared intently upstairs, growling. Everyone who lived at this place was in the living room. It creeped us out, but we just made a joke out of it and tried to keep it light. For the second occurrence, I was having a brand new nightmare. In my dream, I was actively being decapitated, and in real life, my neck was getting hot. I couldn't breathe, and I felt like I was falling out of consciousness, but I woke up screaming, crying, and holding my neck. Then I thought I saw something by the door. My then-boyfriend woke up to my screaming and said he thought he saw something in the room, but that it was so dark it could have been nothing. I hadn't mentioned that I also saw something until after he said something, and this is when I started to fear Toby. We lived there for about a year and a half, roughly, before the other girls moved in with their boyfriends, and I moved into a big house that my then boyfriend's family owned. The mother and sister said that they felt uneasy in that house when they visited, but I figured it couldn't be worse than my nightmares. So, I had two people move in with me, and they experienced things as well. The nightmares were becoming less severe, and I was down to just one nightmare, maybe one to two a week, and it was a small kitten being tortured. It made me really sad in real life, and I would wake up unhappy. This house has two sub-basements, and the first sub-basement was a second living room. The second one had a bedroom with no windows, a bathroom, and a laundry. Our stuff was going missing and then turning up in random places. The front door would just open. My brother came down to visit me, and my other two roommates were working. We were watching a spooky movie in the living room sub-basement, and my one cat was sitting on the arm of the couch that we were sitting on. She quickly turned her head toward the stairs, going down, got up all fuzzied up, and stared intently at the darkness. Her eyes followed something that we couldn't see to the stairs going up. She laid back down, but wouldn't look away from the stairs. My brother looked at me and said that that was damn creepy, and I agreed. A couple of months later, I was doing laundry, and my roommate's bedroom door starts to shake quite violently as he was headed to his room. We both just stood there, looking at the door, perplexed, and suddenly it just stopped. He didn't want to enter his room alone, so I went in with him for peace of mind. Everything was normal in the room, so I left to finish the laundry. It was rather creepy. I moved again, I know, I move a lot, and I lived with my best friend and her boyfriend in June 2018. This is when all Toby occurrences and nightmares completely stopped. Like, as soon as I moved in. It was wonderful. I took the silence for granted, though. A week before Christmas, I experienced my first form of sleep paralysis. And I say form because it wasn't the classic type of sleep paralysis. This scared me so badly, to the point that I could not sleep at all the rest of the night and was noticeably off for the day. My sleep paralysis, I had no idea that I was asleep. Like, honestly, I had no idea that I was asleep. I thought everything happening in my dream was real. I could move, or it felt like moving. In this dream, I was on YouTube, and randomly a deep web YouTube took over. This horribly graphic video was flooding my screen, and I felt the panic of trying to get rid of it, to force it to shut down, but the videos just wouldn't go away. 
I was in full panic mode and I couldn't stop it. And then I woke up. I was really bothered because I had zero idea that I was asleep. I felt like I could feel the laptop in my hands and I still felt the panic. After that radio silence since March of 2019, my male cat, who was six, died suddenly with no previous medical conditions. My friends believe it was Toby. I moved in with my current boyfriend and I hadn't had any nightmares since Christmas of last year and no Toby until last weekend. He plucked the boyfriend's acoustic guitar loudly and distinctly and I also had a new nightmare last night. So far, these are all of my occurrences but this is definitely an ongoing situation. I just want to live my life in peace. Update. So, this morning, my boyfriend wakes me up at 5.30 a.m. He leaves at 6 a.m. And I wake up at 7 a.m. I had a new nightmare in that hour of being alone. I woke up to this feeling of just gloom since I hate these types of nightmares. My cat sits with me as I put on my makeup on the couch and I hear stuff falling and quiet thumps downstairs. I found the blanket cupboard was open and all of the blankets were on the ground. I can only imagine what Toby will do next.